time, I want to thank God for my salvation and our regional pastors. Amen. They are in the work out there doing the work tonight. Hallelujah. Serving. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, and do keep them in prayer as they are going and doing what God has called them to do. Amen. We want to thank them. And then also, uh, uh, we also he also, men's prayer, our prayer on, uh, on Mondays. Hallelujah. I see people say they want prayer. Pray for me. Pray. Pray for this. Pray for that. This brother right here has a ministry that he's trying to implement and, and trying to uh, bridge it to the church. So if you want those prayers, you want to see them, join them. We could pray, but bring those prayers together and see what God is going to do. Amen. You want to see him for after service? Amen. How you can get connected with that? That's a ministry that's tough. <laughs> It's a tough ministry. Amen. Why? Because a lot of times people want to come and hear a message and get tickled. They want you to pray, but they don't want to pray. They don't want to pray. And tonight I want to talk about, um, we're going to be talking about a little bit about warfare, but I, I entitled this message, if you're looking for a title, I entitled it, Expansion Starts With Me, Gear Up. I entitled it, Gear Up. Something had, uh, throughout the week, something had, uh, I got a little disturbed, and so I was convicted in a lot of areas, and I had just finished my, uh, my fast. I had just finished my fast, and I will be fasting again, and God put it in my heart to continue to fast. And just a real quick, just to plug in for Veti, this weekend is, uh, I believe, the deadline to register. So if you want to register, go ahead and you think by, by Monday you have to register. And then also, uh, there's a few more days after that, it's be a late fee. But if you want to register, man, he's right there. Class is ready. Summer course. I will be taking administration, uh, church administration. Amen. And so uh, tonight, I, if you have your Bibles tonight, I, uh, let's turn over to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 6. Thank you, brother. It's a very familiar scripture. But when you read it and study, God begins to give you different points of view. Ephesians chapter 6, and I, I believe you guys have all read it, you've quoted it, we've heard sermons about it, YouTube videos about it, we have Bible studies about it, the men's home, the women's home. You've heard a lot about this, but I'm going to break it down a little bit tonight. I said, the Bible says right here in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, chapter 10, or for chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wells of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers of, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And with having done all the stand, it says again, stand, verse 14, stand. Therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shields of faith, which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, listen, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. And tonight I wanted to talk about, I want to talk about this portion of scripture and I know that, that as Christians and believers and disciples, you've heard this portion of scripture many times. Many times you've heard this scripture. We even in prayer, when I was in the home, I used to pretend like I was putting on the helmet. I was put on the breastplate of righteousness. <laughs> pretend I was be praying and I would pretend like I'm putting it on. And I'd have the sword like that and I'd be praying like that, right? When you were, well, that's when I was in the home. <laughs> and I know that we, we heard this thing, but see... If you study and you go a little more deep, I'm reading this book. That's what you guys are going to take that deep, man. You guys are looking at me all weird. <laughs> but 
you got to take Vecti to understand. Take your theology so you can know there's some heavy stuff about this. I'm reading this book called uh, Spiritual Wickedness in High Places. It's not talking about demons. It's talking about hierarchies. It's a whole different thing. And um, in the book of, uh, of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul, we know that he's writing the letters. And we know that there's a few letters that he wrote to the church and giving instructions. But right here, there's a lot of demonic things taking place. And, and when he's beginning to give this instruction, it's because he began to talk about it later on in Scripture in the book of Colossians. About there's one that's girded and armored and is one called the enemy. And so when you, when you begin to look at this scripture, you see, okay, it's a shield of faith and the sword and it's a belt and it's the sandals of peace. And you, you look at these types and, and bits and pieces of armor as a Christian. But what's happening is that if you have not noticed, when you're called to a time of expansion, it's going to take two things. Expanding your finances and expand with fighting. If I could think of any way when I could contribute when I'm at my best... It would think about fighting. And if you have not noticed lately, we have called to expand to the left and to the right. And as our, our spiritual leader is beginning to guide you, you know that these uh, sermons and these messages are not just for, just for kicks. Talking about staying on the course and being mission-minded, right? We're called for a mission. It's for a certain reason, my friend. And so whenever there's something taking place within Sonar region to expand, I can't help to, to emphasize mostly to, to the congregation that if you're going to help to expand, you're going to have to learn how to fight. Yeah. And I'm not just one to saying that because I just arrived. I've been in some battles, my friend. I've been seeing our leader go through some battles my, myself. And I said, well, you know, like how Brother Anthony was sharing, when it's your time to preach, you kind of think about praying and what are you going to think about? I was, I've been studying about the flies that are in the oil in the book of Ecclesiastics. It talks about the anointing oil and how it gets, it gets uh, disturbed with uh, flies in it. It talks about that, well, once being anointed, how you could be anointed as a leader, but the flies that go into the anointing oil contaminate it. It's in the book of Ecclesiastics. And then I also was looking up the wineskin. How it's how we begin to you look at the Bible and you see that in the gospel it talks about putting uh an, using old wine skin and putting new wine into it, and how it busts is because it can't handle it. So I was thinking about expansion. But God led me here. God led me here because I know that we're being ready to be led into battle because of this expansion that's gonna take place. And those that are in leadership and those that are the core and those that are, that are around, that been around for a while, we know that it's going to take some, you got to understand that one time, that when you see our leader and our pastor begin to emphasize on certain things, he's just not going to let things go right away. If you know him, he's going to get into battle. And if you're there, he's going to lead you into the battlefield with them. So you got to begin to learn how to battle, my friend. There's going to be some casualties that are going to take place. If it's anything that I know about Tri-Cities that we know how to fight. I know people that can, they can begin to expound and, and begin to mention uh, expansion and begin to, and where it's time to expand. I know that all over these churches and the things, they're talking about expansion. But one thing about the inland northwest and the northwest, it don't just come easy for us, my friend. And maybe this message may, might be for you, but just remember this scripture because your day will come when you have to fight and put on your armor, my friend. And so I think about that. When you look at that, there's different things taking place in our region. And usually when, when churches get hit, it's because there's a demonic, listen, there's a demonic realm that it's at war. That means that the angels are fighting with the demonic forces above. That means it's a war taking place whenever a region begins to get hit. Not just a church, but a region begins to get hit. That's because there's something demonic about to take place with inside the land. And they're fighting for submission. When they begin to go ahead and you look at, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't begin to wrest. We don't wrestle against those things. That word wrestle is because they're both fighting for submission. One's going to submit to the other. And if you don't know about that, that there's, there's different types of realms and kingdoms, my friend. See, the kingdom of man is thrones and dominions and powers and principalities. The kingdom of Satan is spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness and powers and principalities. The kingdom of Christ is apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers, my friend. So you got to understand the kingdom charts. 
spiritual spiritual and earthly kingdoms that are taking that are taking place and the apostle paul when he talks about this he's he's leading the people and he's letting them know about this about this armor that we must take up can i get an amen See, oftentimes the Christian is, must begin to be rooted in those areas. They must know how to go ahead and use that scripture and use the armor. Many times the Christians are always begin to be pointed back to the throne at a time of difficulties, especially in challenges and warfare. Can I get an amen? amen. Often leaders and Christians are measured by the, by the way they're rooted. They're measured by the length of time that they're rooted. The reflection of their maturity marks the believer's stability. And being rooted as a Christian and being that one that's able to take your armor and fight is an important Christian because what kind let me ask you this, what kind of what kind of piece of armor are you? Are you the shield? Are you the shield? Because you know about the shield, right? The shield is the first thing that comes in contact with the enemy. The shield of faith. When the Bible talks about the no weapon formed against us will prosper, it talks about the weapon that's and the fiery darts. When they shoot the darts, the Bible talks about it right here that you'll be able to quench the fiery darts. That's the first thing that gets hit is your shield. And what does the shield stand for? Your faith. The shield of faith. What kind of piece of armor are you? What kind of piece of armor are you? That's the question. And, I, and I, I'm sharing this tonight because if we want expansion, we have to learn how to fight and pray. It's something topical and it's something that's it's kind of basic for first, I think, first level of Christianity. Maybe new converts of, of uh, emphasizing on the basics of, of learning how to pray and fast. But you know what? A lot of people do not have a devotional life. They don't have a devotional life. And they do ministry without a devotional life. And so when the time comes, did you know that you could be under demonic influence and under attack? And not even knowing it. See, these kingdom charts right here, thrones, dominions, powers, and principalities are not demons, my friend. These are hierarchies. And they talk about, they talk about the, why it's hard for churches to grow. And you know that the inland northwest and the northwest region... It's pretty challenging for churches out here to grow because if you look at the Washington, every other city, it's territorial demonic spirits, Wapato, Walla Walla, Yakima. They're all Indian tribal names. And if you're Indian tribal, no offense, but there's some demonic forces behind that and they're territorial and they don't want you to have territorial. uh, They don't want you to possess the people in the land, not the territory, but the people because the people belong to God. See, in the book of Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was led into the high pinnacle, which means the highest point, that means that after Jesus had fasted for 40 days and he took him to the high point, the devil had took him there in his mind. He didn't take him there physically. He took him there in his mind. But when he was telling him to bow down and to go ahead and worship me because I'll give you all of this, he was talking about a world system. He wasn't talking about material and tangible things. He was talking about a system. And I'm saying that this evening is because because we have to be the Christians that know how to fight in war. If we're going to expand, we got to fight. It's not going to just happen like that, my friend. It's not going to be happen. Don't don't get caught up on the high. I'm not trying to bust your bubble and kind of be a bearer of bad news. But I'm just letting you know that you're going to have to go ahead and fight a little bit more. You're going to have to fast a little bit more. When's the last time you fasted? Are you fasting on your own? Are you beginning to pray? What are you feeding yourself, my friend? What are you feeding yourself? What are you reading? What are you, is it, we're just saying amen and copying the blog and copying Facebook and reciting everything that's being posted? Are we taking it in? And this may be kind of harsh for some people, but you're going to have to learn how to fight. You're going to have to fight, my friend. There he goes with spiritual warfare. Yeah, but that's what I was taught because when I go through my stuff, I know that I need to fast. I need to learn how to, I need to fast and begin to pray. Something I get a little extreme about it though. <laughs> I just finished the fast. It was a long fast. It was hot outside too. God. I was like, mmm, that looks good, man. Anything looked good. Looking at this, the ants eat 
this piece of bubble gum, and I was like, that looks good. <laughs> but I was praying for people, and God put it in my heart to pray even more and fast even more, to fast even more. And so when I got a little disturbed, I was like, well, what do you, when you're contributing at your best, what are you doing? This is my area, my gifting. I need to be, fa- I can go long and long term fasting. And do you know how I learned it? Because not only was it a, a principle inside the men's home, but back in the day, pastors, he was fasting a lot. We would have a yard sale, it's hot, and we're fasting. I was like, man, fasting every day. <laughs> we're fasting a lot. But you know what? By fasting, it keeps, you're, he, you're fighting against these demonic forces, these hierarchies. But one of the things is that we have to learn is that we're not really fighting. We're just calling on the Lord, and he's fighting. Because at this level right here, spiritual wickedness, the rulers of darkness and powers of principalities, those, those are the things that, that uh, those kingdoms right there, are uh, God has to fight those things. Did you know in the book of Daniel, it talks about the prince of Persia, that Daniel had fasted for 21 days, and he said that, uh, the Lord said, uh, he told Daniel, I have, my heart has been with you since you steadfast, since the beginning of your fasting. He said, but, but the prince of Persia withstood me 21 days, and Michael, the archangel, had to come and fight those things. So whenever you look at our region, listen, we have to fight and fast and pray. And I'm not just reciting this off of another church. This is something that was taught, and it's pretty basic, but people are not doing it. We're doing just ministry. You think you're going to expand and get caught up on the hype? Like we're going to expand. Oh, yeah, the w- yeah you're going to expand? All right. We'll see. And I'm not giving them any credit tonight, but I'm letting the people know that, look, we must begin to gear up. Gear up. If the leader's gearing up, all I know is that I've seen this before. When he gets ready to battle, you better go ahead and get your sword, stab it in the ground, and begin to get your rope and tie yourself off because it's going to be a win one. Can I get an amen? Yeah. A time of warfare, my friend. Churches are getting hit and people are, there's casualty, but it ain't going to stop us to get caught up on the, fo- on the Facebook or, the, or this and that or she said, he said thing. We got to begin to fast and pray. Fast and pray and begin to believe it. And to gear up. Put on your armor. Get suited and booted and rooted. See, without biblical roots and the blood of Christ, Christianity has no no, uh, fundamental foundation of faith. Relationship with God settles a compromised state and it's grounds for discontent and disqualifies the one for the prize. During a time of warfare, you must understand that you must be rooted with your armor. It's basic. See, even in the U.S. military, the significant things about the U.S. military is that they're trained and prepared for those things when they go in and see their enemy. They're trained when they go out there into the warfare. They're trained. And so I'm taking us back to the drawing board because, yes, we're going to expand, but it's going to take us to fast and pray and to gear up to go ahead and intercede. That's why at 3 a.m., that's the witching hour. With the witching hour is when the angels go and collect all the, you hear that, let it be a sweet aroma to your nostrils and let it fill the bowl of incense. You hear those scripture when they talk about that is because the angels are collecting prayers. And if you know anything about angels, angels have a ministry. Angels have an assignment. There's a couple of things that angels do. Number one, they take you to heaven or hell at your death. And number two, they begin to go ahead and take messages back and forth to earth. And there are angels that have ministries. They have their messengers. Did you know the angels are around you all the time? They're even there when you sin. I learned that in theology. They're there when you sin. Did you know that the angels have feelings? That's why when a person gets saved, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. They're rejoicing because they have feelings. And so angels are fighting in a demonic realm. And did you know that the angels are the ones that grab the blessings and they bring it down and they begin to to bring it down? Did you know that when you pray at a certain spot, there's a portal tool that goes straight up to heaven? This may be too heavy for you guys, huh? It's a tunnel that goes straight up to heaven because you create a tunnel and it goes straight to heaven. And then you pray every single day in that spot, it creates a direct path straight up. That's heavy, huh? 
And so the angels are there, and they're there being messengers. But the angels are fighting for you. That's why the Bible says that Jesus is not asleep, that he makes intercession. That's why when Jesus told Peter, look, I have prayed for you, the enemy is asking him to sift you up as wheat. If the sin is crouching at the door and desires to have you. And I'm talking about this because we don't know that these principalities, when we get ready, we're getting ready to go into battle and to expand. And when we get, get ready to expand, you need to gear up, my friend. Because if the leaders go in the battle, guess what? If you're around, you're going in the battle. You're going into battle. And we're a church that's going to fight for it. We're going to fight because we know how to fight. Do you guys believe that? See, the army summarizes basic expectation. And the seven core values, there's loyalty, duty, and respect, personal courage, and selfless service, integrity, and honor. Although the job of the responsibility and the assignment apply to every soldier regardless of the rank that they are in. A soldier's duty can change upon need. Can I get an amen? Here's the scriptures. Colossians 1 6, as the king it stands, it talks about the kingdom of man. I'm gonna read it for the sake of time. For for by him we are we're all things created that are in heaven, listen, in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether there be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, and all. And all things were created by him and for him. There is a kingdom of Satan. Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness. Now, if you look at spiritual wickedness, that's a whole different ballgame. And I'm saying that because this, we're not dealing, we're not dealing with no little de- demons here. This is a principality, okay? I'm not trying to scare you guys either, but we have to be on guard. That's what the Bible says. Be watchful, it says. Be watchful. Have discernment. Be on your toes and be guarded. Can I get an amen? Be on your toes and be guarded. The whole armor. You break this whole, this is pretty broad. Listen, this is pretty broad when you go here. And it's kind of like teaching, preaching, but I want you guys to have some substance tonight. I could be doing a bunch of yelling But I need you guys to understand that we need to be in unity and we need to gear up and just follow suit and follow rank and begin to pray and fast. I've seen it multiple times. People get delivered. Things are happening. Things are shifting. And things are shifting in 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 the demonic realm. And so usually when churches get hit, there's a big fight up there that we don't know about. And I'm I'm trust me, I'm studying this stuff. And so I'm saying that, that we have the power through Jesus. When we have the armor, you have the power through Jesus. And you have to begin to call out to him. And the reason I wanted to bring that up is because there's a portion of scripture, right? There's a portion of scripture. And it talks about it in, in, uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when King Jehoshaphat finds himself facing the enemy that is far stronger than he is. I want you to watch the, how he does it. He goes to fight in battle, and he knows he could, he could never win on his own. In verse 12, he prays, Our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, for our eyes are on you. What Jehoshaphat did, Jehoshaphat did thousands of years ago, Is what Paul is saying to do today is to call on the Lord and be strong and straight in his might. Those are things where we need to call on the Lord. It's not something we could come out here and and cast out demons. But this one, we got to call on the Lord. You have to fight for your family. You got to call on the Lord. We can't do it. This is this is something wholly different. But we need to pray and fast. And gear up. Because this expansion 
The third wave, they talk about expansion. The third wave, expansion. Going to Spokane, going where we need it. That's going to take people that are going to be geared up, that are ready. Otherwise, I'll say it, and I've seen it over and over. You'll get hit, and you'll be a casualty of war. That's why the message you see, pastor was saying, stay on the course. Stay the course. It's not just for anything. It's for a reason. Amen? As we all stand. The Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 1, he says, where do you come from? He says, I have come from and to the earth. Listen. The Bible talks about the enemy in 1 Peter 5, 8. He says that he is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. But when Jesus was in the wilderness in chapter, Matthew chapter 4, did you know that it was a dry place? It was a dry, listen, it was a dry place. And if you know anything about a lion, the lions always go in dry places. And if you look at a lion, one thing about a lion is that his senses, he could smell up to miles away. He goes, <laughs> and he could smell miles away. And I like this illustration because it's important that we must know that this, a lion, one thing about a lion is that a lion, when you see his arms and, his, and the back of his bones go up and down, one thing about a lion is he's getting ready for his prey. But one thing about a lion, look at, one thing about a lion is he has patience. A lion has patience. He waits. In other words, he waits for his prey. But one thing about a lion is that with his senses, when a lion ever goes after a deer and a zebra or an Apollo, when he ever go, when he ever, anytime he goes after those animals, he always goes for the weakest link. You know why? Because lions can smell if the deer and the zebra are not drinking water. Because they begin to give a foul odor. They give a foul odor. In other words, they... They begin, their skin begins to smell. Their skin begins to smell. So the lion goes, you're not reading your word. I got you. He knows when you're not praying. I got you. He knows when you don't have a devotional life. He knows when you're just doing ministry out of the norm. I can smell you from far away. I can smell the weakness from far away. A lion's capability to smell far away. He could smell your skin and the spiritual realm. He could smell if you're not prayed up. He could smell if you're not reading your word. He goes, and he'll wait. And when he waits, the minute you step out of the box, he grabs you. The lion goes from and to, but a lion only walks around in dry places. He only walks in your mind when you're dry. He walks around like a, like a lion seeking who he may devour. So when a Christian's dry, that's where the lion goes. He, he goes in dry places and he walks around. And I'm saying that it's important, my friend. To begin to go ahead and gear up. Begin to gear up. Get ready. Whatever direction we're going, just be ready. We have to fight as a church. You know why people don't want to fight? Because there's a fight inside them still. They can't fight something that you're still battling themselves. They want to slay giants, but they got to slay the one in them first. And it's hard for people. And I'm not knocking them. But we have to begin to lock arms and fight. That's my area. If I can contribute when I'm at best, I need to be fasting and praying. We've been fasting. Today we fasted too. Like, man. <laughs> but we can't be dry. Because that's where the enemy comes in. He walks around. And he can sniff you out. I'm just saying that because... 
you want to expand, you're going to have to fight for it. You're going to have to fight for it. You're going to have to fight for the expansion. We can't ride on the coattail and the highlights of our pastor. I can't. But he knows if you want to make it, there's been times where the enemy hits, but God is greater. You have to know that. You have to know that he's great. If you know who your God is, then you'll be secure. Secure. But you got to know who your God is. Some people don't know. They only know, you know, they only know who God is on a Friday or a Sunday. They don't know God throughout the week. It's here. You want to get plugged into the ladies' life group? There it is. Prayer on Monday, there it is. For the women, if you want to pray some, talk to my wife at the women's homes, you know, here and there, you want to go over there and pray? It's prayer. It's prayer every morning. <laughs> I heard that music. I'm like, yep, they're praying. You know, lower the bass, though, man. Man, the bass is too. I'm going to burn out my speaker, man. <laughs> like, lower the bass. I had Tiffany with that bass is cranking. I'm like, man, tell her, lower that bass, man. <laughs> but to pray, a season of time or expansion, that's what God put in my heart, man. We're at the gear up because we're going into battle. When he comes back, there might be some instructions. If we got to go to Spokane, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're just going to do what we do. We're going to bring out the oil. Let's pray. Let's have service. Get the men's home. Get the women's home. Let's go. Let's do it. I told him, I'm ready. I'm right here. We're ready to go. I told him, we're ready to go. Let's do it. But something got me disturbed. And I, the first thing I thought when I got a little disturbed, I was like, I thought about King David when he said, isn't there a cause? I was like, man, why did it take months to get stirred up like that? But when something happens and you get stirred up, you're like, mm, okay, fine. I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast. We're going to fast. People are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to fast. Yeah, you got to fight. You got to fight. And you don't know how to fight. You don't know how to fast. We'll show you. That's the only way we're going to get a breakthrough. There's a demonic force that's trying to stop you from getting your breakthrough. It's evident today. Right there with your hand. Lift your hands tonight. Come on, all over the place. Lift your hands right now. Come on, you need a breakthrough tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Pour it out. Come on, pour it out in my life, God, tonight, Jesus. Pour it out tonight, Holy Spirit. We need you tonight, Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit. We pray tonight, Jesus. You get the glory, God. You get the honor, God. You have the power, Jesus, to break chains. You have the power, God. You have the power, God, to move mountains, God. You have the power, God, to move, God. You have the power to heal the sick, God. You have the power, God, to diminish strongholds, God. You have the power to move sorcery, God. You have the power, Holy Spirit, to move witchcraft, God, in the precious name, God. In the precious name of Jesus, God. Break addiction, God, in their lives so they can battle, so they can fight, God. Call them in, God, if they're not here, God. Call in those soldiers, God. Call in those men, those women, God, that are willing to fight, God, that are willing to lay up, God, that are willing to kill up, God, to put their shield, God. That are ready to fight for a cause, my God. If they're not here to you, send them, God. In the precious name of Jesus, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, these altars are open. If God spoke to you, these altars are open. Come on, pray it out inside their lives, God. In the precious name of Jesus, God. Pray, God. We need your anointing, God. We need your anointing, Jesus. Pour it out. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 
hallelujah. Come on, right there where you're at, just lift your hands. I want to read this portion of scripture. The Bible says that dead flies, dead flies purify the perfumer's ointment. Listen, the perfumer's ointment. And it causes it to give off a foul odor. So does a little foley to one respected for wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is at the right hand, but the fool's is at the left. Dead flies. Listen, if God's called you for an anointing, the dead flies contaminate the anointing. In other words, you have to be holy. You have to be holy, my friend. If you desire to do the work of the Lord and God's called you to do something, dead flies purify the performer's ointment and contaminates the anointing. In other words, you got to stay holy. We have to stay holy. We can't be contaminated. We can't be contaminated. We can't allow the flies to go in our anointing. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. With that, lift your hands right there. You have to stay holy, my friend. Oh, have your way tonight, Jesus. Have your way tonight, Holy Spirit. Break chains, God. We pray tonight, Jesus. We call God, separate God. In the precious name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands right there. Come on, begin to. Come on, let's sing it right there. Oh, have your way tonight, Jesus. Oh, in the precious name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Sanctify God. Separate God. In the precious name of Jesus, God. Separate them, God. In the name of Jesus, right now, God. A divine call, God. A divine touch, God. In the precious name of Jesus, do your work, Holy Spirit. Do your work inside their lives, my God. Let them begin, God, to get ready, God, to expand the mind, God, expand their heart, God, expand their faith, God. In the name of Jesus, right now, God. Pour, God, a blessing, a baptism of the Holy Spirit, God, inside their lives, God. In the name of Jesus, God. We pray, God, for your divine power and strength, God. You would touch them, God, right now in the precious name of Jesus, God. We pray, Holy Spirit. I just want to give this invitation. If, if you're here in this sanctuary and you say, you know what? I want to repent. I want to give my life to Jesus. You see, you know what? I need change. I need something different. I need something new in my life. I need you, God. If that's you and you want to come and give your life to God, it's not the altar call that saves you, but it's your confession that saves you. And your faith and beat into confession is onto salvation. And that's you. And you say, you know what? I need prayer, though. I want you to come so I can pray for you. If that's you tonight, I want you to come right here. You see, you know, I need prayer. If that's you. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, God. Lord, I thank you tonight, God, for your men and your women, God, your congregation, my God. I thank you, God, for your spirit, my God, and your anointing in this place, my God. Let your hand be upon your people, my God, as they leave, God. Lord, and I pray, God, that they don't just leave here, God, the same, God, but change, God, in your presence, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give Jesus another big hand tonight.